Okay, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Hello, hello. My name is Leslie Germain. Uh, today we're going to have a fun class, lots of different dynamic movements. We're going to get the heart rate up a little bit and play. You know, sometimes a yoga class can be really serious and there's a place for that. But right now I feel like I want to feel some joy, a little bit of lightheartedness. The world is just very serious right now and overwhelming. So in our practice today, let's try to bring a little bit of lightness to it and a little bit of being like a kid. And so if you're feeling at all like you wanna just jump for joy at any point in your living room or in whatever room you practice in, feel free, you know? Maybe join your kids with you and say, let's do a little ring around the rosy for a minute and then come back and practice with me. I mean, that is like one of the best things about practicing at home, one of the actual pluses, is that you can do these silly things that your heart beckons for that you can't just do in a yoga studio. Okay? So find your strap or your long piece of cloth, your towel, your belt, whatever it was. And we're gonna reach it up overhead. And we're just gonna do a little shoulder flossing, flossing here as we drop the strap down in front of us. Inhale, spinning the strap up. And then going behind us, so you might need to widen the space between your hands to go that way. And over time, you can decrease that space. But for now, go wider rather than shorter. And we're just gonna keep going up and forward, up and back. And we'll do this for about a minute. And so you'll have enough time moving with your breath to walk your hands in slightly and readjust if you need to. Hello, whoever else just came in. I see I have four people now. <laughs> yeah. So you might start to already feel a little bit of heat around your shoulder area. We're increasing the blood flow there. And notice if you do a little back bend when you're moving your arms up and back, see if you can try to diminish how deep you go into a back bend and try to keep it mostly in the shoulders so we're not overcompensating in other parts of our body. So I'm gonna make my, my grip a little bit shorter and move a little bit slower. And if there's one area in particular that feels really sticky, like for me it's right here, that upper back, I'm gonna breathe here for a little bit. And then move it just a little bit higher or lower than where that spot was. How does it feel there? Maybe you start to shift over to the right, letting the left arm go up high in the sky. Arms are now stacked up. And then switching sides, arms reach up high. And then exhale as your left arm pulls down, right arm reaches up. So the more that you pull on the strap, the deeper you're going to feel this along the lateral side of the body. So inhale, come back up. Exhale, pull the right side of the strap and you'll root the sit bones. Mm -hmm. Maybe you look up to the left side of the room. Let's do one more. Beautiful. And so you can stay doing that for a little bit longer if you'd like. You have another couple rounds in you. And eventually we're all gonna meet in a comfortable seat. Closing your eyes, bringing your hands to your knees. And you can either have your palms facing down or facing up. You might not even notice a difference whether it's down or up and just go with what feels more lighthearted for you today, more playful. And find your breath here. Noticing any sensations that might come up within the physical body the emotional body, the energetic body. 
And try not to fixate on those sensations. Just notice like a wee, uh, the wind rustling a leaf. It disturbs it for a moment and then it's gone. Try to sit a little bit taller while relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the jaw. Allow the exhale to become a little longer than the inhale. If you're still holding tension on anywhere, maybe your legs, your wrists, the back of your head, adjust slightly to release the tension and we'll be here for about five more Slow and steady breaths. Taking your arms, reaching out wide, away from each other, like you're scooping up the air, and then inhale deeply as your arms keep rising. Eventually your palms will touch at the top as your exhale, palms come down together towards heart center. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, reaching your arms away and up. Exhale down. One more, inhale. Maybe you exhale through the mouth. Palms press in together, thumbs pushing into your sternum to find a little lift of the chest. And if you'd like to join me in one ohm, take a full exhale. Inhale. for joining me and if you haven't commented down below let me know that you're here so I can say hello and we're gonna find our way down onto our backs and we're gonna start with a little bit or a lot of bit of movement shaking everything out so starting with a little bit of a softer shake not going full on hundred percent here so maybe the wrists the knees bend the ankles wiggle. Maybe you start to make bigger movements with your arms to find movement in the shoulders, hugging yourself. Outer hips can move as well. And then we start to make the movement a little bigger, shake a little harder, move a little faster. Maybe the torso starts to shake left to right as well. And if you really want to play, move your face, the eyes, the mouth, the tongue, Move your lips, or your tongue, right? <laughs> Make all those funny movements. Keep wiggling a little bit harder. Shake it out, let it go. If you're holding on to anything from this week or just yesterday, say goodbye. I don't need you right now. No, 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 I am here. I'm alive and I'm with my breath. Shake a little bit more. And now exhale, <sighs> let everything come down to the ground, feet together, knees go wide, reclined butterfly pose. It might benefit you right now to take an inhale through the nose and a ah. I know if you're new to this, it's embarrassing. Inhale. But look around the room. Who's watching? 
Just the whole internet. <laughs> ah. All right. Reach your arms up overhead, placing your palms together. And let your palms lay flat. And then we're going to reach our fingertips towards our feet and our head and shoulders will eventually lift off the ground. Mm -hmm. And hold here. Pushing your palms together and the soles of your feet together. And moving the, the movement, trying to lift through the low core. So coming back down and starting the movement here with the low abs. Lifting back up and then back down again and up. So you can choose whether you go all the way down to the ground or whether you keep your head and shoulders elevated slightly and you do more of a move an inch down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. And we're going to do this for about a minute. Whew. So you can start to feel your core wake up, say good morning. If you're not feeling anything, reach your fingertips a little bit further towards your feet. And really don't let the shoulders touch. Keep the shoulders lifted. Remember, we're moving through this low core region. You can use the upper core, but we're trying to activate the lower transverse abdominal muscles. Let's do it for five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Release your arms up overhead. Take a deep stretch here. Draw one heel further away from the other with your toes pointing up. And then drawing your knees into your chest, giving yourself a hug. Happy baby pose. Beginning to roll left to right. If you'd like to straighten one leg, go ahead. And then switch sides. Beautiful. Knees come back in. Give yourself a tight squeeze. Maybe your head and neck lift off the ground, nose to knees. And we're going to start rocking and rolling ourselves forwards and backwards. Eventually finding our way into a standing position, planting our feet, rooting and rising as we inhale, lift our arms up overhead, gazing at our fingers. Exhale, softening the knees, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, down. Let's do that two more times, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Finding a little more space from the crown of your head through the tailbone. Exhale. Bending the knees however much you need for your belly and thighs to touch. And then grabbing onto your elbows and hanging out here. Taking your breath into the back body. Noticing whether you're more lengthening or widening that space today with your breath. And try to go for both, both equally. Inhale, rooting your feet as you roll up one vertebrae at a time. Sweeping your arms up overhead, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bring your hands down to the ground and walk yourself back into high plank here. Holding high plank. Maybe lifting your left leg off the ground, allowing it to float a few inches. So don't kick it up super high. We're not doing a back bend here. We're just working on our core strength and our leg strength. So allow it to float a few inches off the ground and notice if your hips try to move, try to stay in that plank like shape. Exhale, left leg lowers. Lift the right leg. Now your booty might go up a little higher in the air. Over time, as you practice strengthening the muscles, try to shift your weight more into that flat shape. 
Right leg goes down to the ground, okay. That wasn't so bad. What happens if we lift our left hand off the ground? Now if that feels impossible, if it feels like you're leaning to the right, more like a side plank, then walk your feet out into a wider position. So they're at the edges of your mat or even off your mat. And now lift the left arm just an inch or two off the ground. Try to keep that left hip in the same height as the right for three, two, one. Oh my gosh, this isn't over yet. Nope, one more hand. Right arm lifts. Hold here for three and two and one. Exhale, walking your feet back together again if you moved them far away. Knees down, chest down, chin down, everything down. Untucking your toes. Inhale, lift. Cobra pose. Exhale, lower. Pushing all 10 toes down into the ground. Your kneecaps might even lift off the ground because you're pushing your feet so deeply into the earth. And then inhale, lift the chest. Notice if you're pushing your hands into the ground to find that lift, it's okay to do that like 10% or so, but don't let it be all of it. So then test yourself on that, lift your hands off the ground. And if you moved too far down, then we know that we're using mostly our hands and not our core. One more breath. Exhale, lower. Okay, walking your hands a little bit closer, like an inch closer to the belly button than they just were. Now we're gonna push our hands down a little bit more to the earth. Inhale, lift. Pull the shoulder heads away from each other. Exhale, lower. Hands come back under shoulders, tuck the toes, lift your feet towards your heels. Downward facing dog. Walking your dog out here. And notice if you're dumping into the upper body here, if you're feeling a lot of weight in your hands, push the ground away. It's almost like you're pushing one of those really heavy Amazon boxes that you, you cannot lift. But if you push it, you're gonna do the same thing here with the ground. Push, 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 and you'll notice your hips begin to lift up and away. That's great. If that feels too hard for your legs, bend the knees while you continue pushing the ground, lifting the hips. And over time, the legs will lengthen and you'll be able to lengthen the legs and the heels will get a little closer to the ground. One more breath. Exhale, bend the knees, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, interlacing your hands behind your back, forward fold. We'll be here for five breaths. Exhale, releasing your hands down to the ground. Sorry, I'm doing my hair really quick. <laughs> and then jumping yourself back into high plank. Inhale here. Exhale, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga if you're ready for it. Coming down halfway. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, lifting the hips up back into your down dog. Pivoting that right heel down to the ground. And then inhale, lift the left leg up in the sky. So the whole sole of the right foot is down on the ground. And instead of coming into plank pose, we're still in that downward facing dog. Left hand stays where it is. Find something unmoving to look at and come up onto the right fingertips. Mm -hmm. If that feels okay, reach the right arm up and behind you. If that feels okay, bend that lifted leg, reach for the foot. And if you find the foot, kick the foot into your hand, pushing yourself into a bird dog, Ooh, the back bend. Steady gaze. Keep pushing that left hand in the air to keep the hips lifted. Beautiful. Exhale, right hand and left leg come down to the ground. Inhale, shifting your weight forward into high plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. We're coming all the way down to the ground. As we reach our arms behind our back, bend our knees, 
and windshield wiper side to side. All right, reaching back for your feet, Dhanurasana bow pose, so lifting the shoulder heads off the ground, lifting the chest, and then eventually lifting the knees. We'll be here for five breaths. And for this one, see if you can find more space in the front chest, the shoulder area. So kick the feet a little bit more into your hands and allow your arms to straighten and chest to lift for two. And one, exhale, release, rest your other cheek. If you need to windshield wiper the legs to release your low back, go ahead. Downward facing dog. This time the left heel is gonna pivot down to the ground. And then the right leg lifts up into the sky. So left heel stays down, right hand stays down. Those are your roots. Your left hand, if you wanna play with lifting the left arm, at first you start on your fingertips. And keep a little weight in the fingertips. And the more that you push that right hand into the ground, push that heavy box away from you, you'll feel more weight distribute in the right hand and the left foot. And then eventually that left hand can become a free agent and do whatever it needs to do, whether it stays lifted off the ground or whether you bend and lift that back leg. If you're going into the back bend, allow your chest to melt a little bit more towards the mat. Steady gaze. One more breath. Beautiful, exhale, release. Bringing yourself back into downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees. Step jump or float to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale as though you're coming up out of water. Mountain pose. Closing your eyes. Pausing and feeling here. Root your feet. Stack the crown of your head over your heart, over your hips, and over your heels. Feel solid. I'm moving. Okay. Coming into tree pose, rooting your left foot and sliding the right leg up. So feel free to use your hand to bring the right leg up just a little bit higher. higher. And then inhale, sending your arms up high. Exhale as you take your right arm, bend at the elbow, left arm reaches behind you. So don't worry if you're unable to find the fingertips. If you have that strap nearby still, go ahead and find that. And if you're able to find your fingertips, awesome. If not, also awesome. So the right knee is bent in the tree and the right elbow is pointing up. And then we begin to lean over to the left. So the right elbow and right knee move a little bit further away from each other. Keep that left foot rooted, especially the arch side edge. Mm -hmm. One more breath. Exhale, releasing your hands, keeping your feet in tree pose. Turning back around for you. Actually, let's bring our hands back together. Sorry, I had us wanting to go somewhere. Okay, come back to that binded tree and now release your knee into your chest. So it's if you were holding onto your leg, which we're not doing, we're gonna use our strength here. We're gonna try to draw that knee up close to our chest and then let the leg kick out long. So your leg might be down here and your knee might be right here and this is where your range is that's okay over time you start to develop more strength in the hips and the legs that you can bring the leg up a little bit higher believe me after i had my kids i was here and this hurt uh, a lot okay so it took me a long time to be able to reach my leg up high without using my arms to help me and then taking your knee, bending the knee, kicking back, warrior three. So your arms are bounded. If that's too scary for you, release your hands, bring them to heart center or fly them out wide. <laughs> I'm kicking the wall behind me. Whew. Yeah, 
Yeah, strong core, navel to spine. See if you can square the hips. Right hip bone pointing down for three, two, one. Release your arms to heart center. Exhale, hands come down to the ground, standing splits. And you can either handstand, jump back to plank, or walk yourself back to plank. It's up to you. Play. See what happens. Inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. So if you want to play with some handstand jumps but you're too scared, feel free to face the wall right now. We're going to do a couple of handstand tucks. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees. Try to jump the hips over the head and then back down again. We're just getting light on our feet. So you might be here. Make sure to bend the knees and try to jump your feet together like you're clapping your toes and then come back down. Like I said, you can use the wall behind you if you're afraid of going into a back bend. Let's do two more. Until eventually coming into a forward fold at the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale down. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Tadasana. We're going to do tree pose on the other side. Rooting the right leg. Left leg slides up the trunk until eventually you settle into your tree. And so this tree is a little different. Our branches aren't growing straight up. Instead, our left arm reaches up, bends at the elbow, and then we find our fingers or our strap behind us. Steady gaze. Root that right foot and then start to lean over to the right as that left elbow searches, reaches up, up, up and away. Keep pushing the left sole of your foot into your right leg, externally rotating the hip. One more breath. Keep your hands where they are. Slowly stand up tall again, taking the knee forward into your chest. Kicking your leg out long and back in again. Each side is different. So this side might be a little lower, it might be a little bit higher. We're just moving with an extension and flexion here. Noticing how this movement affects our standing leg. And then eventually we're going to bend the knee and start to shift our weight back. Foot kicks back, torso shifts down to the ground. So we're in the same line as the ground. And you're going to be here for five breaths. If you need to bring your hands down to the ground at any point, that's okay. Work on finding stability and ease wherever you are. For three, two, one. You can keep your hands here if you really want to do standing splits with the bind. Feel free. Otherwise, release your hands down to the ground. And then we're going to come into once again, jumping into handstand if you want to go into your plank pose. One inhale here, exhale child's pose. So I have to take a child's pose because I'm talking through this and I need to conserve my energy and my breath. So you'll notice in these intermediate advanced classes, there are more child's pose interspersed throughout that I wouldn't have if I were leading you in real life, but <laughs> I need to make it the whole hour and 15 minutes. So if you don't feel like doing a child's pose and you wanna do some push-ups, you can go ahead but I'm gonna be here for about 30 seconds with my arms down to my sides. Coming back to my breath again. Finding stillness from within. Okay, downward facing dog whenever you're ready. Inhale, sending that right leg up high, stacking the hips, bending the knee. And be free with this leg if you want to move it around in big knee circles. Feel free. You can go all the way in towards center. 
freedom in the right leg. Your choice. How do you need to move right now? That's the fun thing about these more advanced classes is I trust that you know your body well enough that you know what you need. And sometimes my cues are not what you need. Sometimes you need something else. So go there. Inhale, lengthen your right leg. Exhale, bring your right foot through in between your hands, pivoting the back heel down, warrior two. Inhale, straightening the front leg as your arms reach up and touch at the top. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lengthen and reach. Dancing warrior, exhale. Three more. Exhale, you might even make it a little bit more like a reverse dancing warrior where you're reaching more towards the back edge of your foot versus the front. Last one. Exhale, bending that front knee, extended side angle pose. Top arm reaches up overhead. Maybe you have your elbow down on your knee. Maybe you reach that hand down to the ground. Or maybe you go for the bind. Taking the left arm underneath, left right arm underneath, sorry. Left arm on top. I was doing a yoga practice with my husband who's new to yoga. It's like his fourth class ever. And someone cued a bounded extended side angle. And instead of the right arm going under, he took the left arm and the right arm. And I was like, what is he doing? But, you know... We all learn differently, right? Audio, visually, and online, it's a hot mess because everything's mirrored differently. So sometimes you have to look at the picture and try to look at yourself. Like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? All right, starting to walk that left foot forward to meet the right. Rooting your left foot, just like tree pose, strong left leg, and then you start to pull that right leg up. Engage the core, coming into a bird of paradise. And don't worry if you can't extend that right leg. We haven't done a lot of leg stuff yet, but we've done a little bit of hip. And notice your shoulders here. See if you can pull your shoulder heads back. Mm -hmm. And then the very last part is lifting that right foot up in the air. If you don't feel like doing it right now, then don't. This is beautiful in itself, isn't it? Yeah. All right, exhale, slowly lower. That right leg back down to the ground. Left leg comes back into your extended side angle. Exhale, reaching your right hand to the shin and straightening the right leg. Triangle pose, Trikonasana. And we're gonna make big shoulder rolls here. Left arm reaches down and up. Mm -hmm. And feel free to make this a little bit more big in the back and the shoulder. You don't have to just keep that arm in one plane. You can go 360 here. Use the space all around you. It's not like you're a helicopter blade and you can only move in one X, Y. You got X, Y, Z here for all my math people out there. And if there's one spot that you like in particular, go there, reverse direction. If you want to go for the bind and triangle, dip that right shoulder, maybe bend the knee at first to find the bind and then start to straighten that right leg, folding forward, twisting the rib cage. We'll be here for three. Everything I say is an option. You do not have to do it. Two, you can keep rotating that arm. One more breath. Beautiful exhale, bringing your hands to the inside edge of that right foot, back heel pivots over the toes, dragon pose. It's like lizard except the back leg is lifted. And see if you can straighten that back kneecap just a little bit more so we don't have a big knee bend back there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go for the arm balance, go ahead. Ekapada Kundanyasana 2. If you want to do dragonfly instead, you want to take your right shoulder and dip it underneath the left or the right knee. Walk the right hand out, the left hand comes out. So we're pushing our fingertips into the ground and then push your arms up and fly. So your legs are your root, and the rest of your body is soaring above the clouds. If you're in Ekapada, jump back, high plank pose, do a vinyasa. If you did dragonfly, bring your hands back down to the inside of your foot, kick the right leg behind you. Feel free to go through plank, upward dog to downward facing dog, or join me here in down dog. As 
like to say you're doing beautiful. <laughs> I can't see you, but I know that you are beautiful. Inhale, send that left leg up high. You can bend the knee once again, be free. This is your flow. Move that left leg however you need. Find freedom in your down dog. Let go of expectations. Just be you, your authentic self. Beautiful, one more inhale as you lengthen that left leg. Exhale, left leg comes through. Hit at the back heel down, warrior two. So you can keep your hands with your palms facing down to the sky or maybe flip your palms up for this one. And then inhale as you lengthen the legs, palms come together like a clap. Inhale, open. Exhale. Inhale, I might have switched the breath around, oh well. Exhale, <laughs> two more. Last one. Maybe you reach more for a reverse warrior here. And then exhale as you come into your extended side angle. Elbow comes to knee, top arm reaches up overhead. Really root through that back foot. Don't collapse on the arch if you can. And then wherever you went on the other side, whether the left hand came down to the ground or maybe the bind, repeat for equanimity's sake. So once again, if that left leg is forward, the left shoulder dips on the inner thigh. Swing the arm like a little pendulum until eventually that back of the hand reaches the glutes, right arm reaches. So the left arm is the one that's reaching through the leg, so that's the one that's gonna grip. Whichever one is reaching through the awkward spot finds the other arm, okay? Bird of paradise, if you went there, scooting that right leg forward. <laughs> it's a little more awkward coming to the camera with this one. Right leg roots. Slowly engage the core to lift the left leg off the ground. Mm -hmm. Steady gaze, steady breath. This is more to myself. Keep breathing, right? Standing up tall, stack of the head over the heart, over the hips, over the heels, and then at the end, Straighten that left leg however much you can for three. Keep spreading the shoulder heads away from each other. One more breath. Beautiful. Exhale. Slowly lower yourself back down to the ground. Stepping that right foot back for your extended side angle pose. Warrior two. Oh no, we went into triangle pose from there. Yeah. Straighten that left leg as you reach the right arm up into the sky for triangle. We're gonna do big arm circles here. First going forward with the right hand, back up again. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? How's your breath? Reverse direction. Isn't it interesting how each side feels a little different? Maybe you notice it more in your shoulders or hips <coughs> or ribs on each side. And then if you want it to go for the bind here, do a little micro bend in the knee so you can find your bind. Left hand reaches for the right. And over time, you slowly push that left foot into the ground, sending your hips up and away, allowing your torso to fold forward over that left leg and keep spiraling the rib cage up to the right side of the room for three. Where can you soften? Two. Beautiful, last breath. Releasing your hands on the inside edge of that left foot, back heel pivots, dragon pose. So once again, if you wanna go for that arm balance, feel free. Otherwise, walk that left arm underneath and we're gonna to try to float it off the ground. Right arm reaches to the right, arms are reaching away from each other. And if you are flying in your dragonfly here, notice if your hips are square or if they're angled out. Over time, we're working on squaring the hips. One more breath. Lift the chest. Yes, exhale. If you're in your ekapada, kick back. Find your way into plank pose. And we're gonna all lower down to the ground to the count of five, four, three. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, two, one, we're hovering, navel to spine. 
Maybe lift the knees if you brought your knees down for a breath. Exhale, lower everything down. Whew. Windshield wiper the knees or scoot the hips left to right. Sphinx pose. Forearms come down to the ground. Push the chest forward. Ten toes pushing down. Bending that left leg, pivoting that right arm so the palm is closer and the elbow is under the shoulder. The left palm is, or the right palm, sorry, is more underneath the left shoulder. And then reach the left arm back for your foot. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're reaching back and you can find your toes. What we want to do is soften the front of the thigh here. So notice if it's super tight, where can you soften? You might need to walk that right hand out a little bit more in front of you so you don't feel so much pinchiness in your low back. If you want to flip the grip on your toes, draw your fingertips around and forward so they're not wrapping over the big toes and then pull down. If you want to add a back bend into this, reach your right fingertips forward, push your hand into the ground and then gaze up. Spread the collarbones. Push your hand into your foot just a little bit more. Exhale, dropping the forearm down to the ground if you went there. Release, bringing your forehead down to your hands, elbows wide apart. A little shimmy of the hips. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. This time left elbow pushes down to the ground, bending the right knee. And so if you can't find that foot, because sometimes when things are behind us, it's like, what? I don't see it. That's blank space back there. What you want to do is eventually find your strap, wrap it around into a loop so then you can find the strap. But if you can find your foot, grab your foot, push it down. And this is one of those poses where if you're holding on super tight in the glutes or the thigh, then your body's not going to let you open up into it. So you have to talk to those body parts and say, hey, thigh, you're being a little aggressive right now. Calm down, soften, and then push down your foot. And notice all that space that was created because you let go of the fear. And your body is doing this to protect you. It's smarter than we are. But we can also talk back to our body. If you wanted to go into the back bend, left arm now reaches forward, coming up onto your palm, pushing the ground away. Keep pushing that right hand into your foot. Soften the elbow slightly if you need to. And the final part is gazing up for three, two, one. Exhale, release, elbows go wide. Pause and feel. Downward facing dog. One deep inhale here. Let's see how light we can float ourselves forward. Exhale, bend the knees, jumping your hand, feet to the outside of your hands mm -hmm, into a low squat, but we're gonna go back again to down dog. Playing around five times, you can maybe do one leg at a time or both legs at a time. Just seeing how slow you can jump to the outsides. Now you can keep playing like that or if you wanna try to jump into crow, yeah, that's right, downward dog to crow, you can play with that. If that's too scary for you, find a pillow and place it right in front of me, in front of your face. You're gonna do that same action, that same float that you do when you're jumping to the outside, except this time you're gonna squeeze your knees into your arms while you're going down to the ground. Keep your hips lifted, squeeze, and float. Whew. Try that one more time for me. See if you can get there. Whew. All right. If you're in crow, cool. If you're not in crow, let's find our way there. For three, two, one. Exhale, releasing your feet down to the ground. Low squat. Malasana garland pose. This is me finding my breath again. <laughs> I gotta do it every once in a while, yeah. I know. Arms reach out wide. Fly your bird. If you'd like to go for the bind here, 
slide your thumb, so your thumb is now pointing down to the ground, and then reaches behind you. So we're having this internal rotation, so the arm is drawing down and around, so the external is opening up, internal, drawing in. So we're internally rotating, then we're moving the elbow, left arm reaches around, right arm grabs on if it can find it, and then twist. Notice where your hips are compensating. Keep pulling your knees away from each other. One more breath. Exhale. Okay. So keep the bind, okay? We're going to come into basically like a bird of paradise, but with our bind like this. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm going to show you in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. Hopefully you're comfortable here. Keep that left leg rooted. Walk it in slightly. Heel toe, heel toe. Keep your arms wrapped around the right knee. And then a sucker punch to the gut. Lift yourself up. Lift yourself up. Straightening that left leg. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Keep lifting the chest. So it's almost like a bird of paradise who hasn't blossomed yet. You don't want to straighten your leg here. <laughs> you want to keep a nice compression like we're doing a hamstring curl, yeah? All right, let's come back down. Come back down. Just as slow as you went up. You come down. Use your breath and breath and core to control you. Right leg goes out, come back into your low squat, exalt the arms, exhale, Whoo. other side. Opening your arms out to the other side, my left arm is down, my right arm is up. So you can stay here, if at any point you stayed here and this was too much for you, you can always come down to a seat and do a seated butterfly, okay? Because I know this is a lot for your hips. But if we're gonna get into grasshopper later, you gotta do some hip work. Internally rotate by drawing the thumb down and back. Hinge at the elbow. Reach top arm up overhead and grasp. Okay, stay here for a few breaths. Spiraling the rib cage open, widening the space between the knees. Where can you soften? Okay, now we're gonna come for the standing unblossomed bird of paradise. So we start, I like to lift my left heel off the ground a bit, a little bit, so I can bring my right foot in, a little heel toe. We'll see what happens on this side. I might fall on my face. All right, start to squeeze your arms around that left knee to keep it hugged in, root the right foot. Start to straighten, oops, <laughs> see, I fall too, I fall too. All right, there we go. I don't have a steady gaze on this side, but maybe you do. Maybe you do. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, each side is different. Okay, once you're standing, if you're standing, spread the chest, stand tall, soak up the sun. One more breath. Yes, exhale, lower the left leg back down to the ground, coming into that bounded Malasana pose. Exalt your arms, open out wide. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, pushing the ground away, sweeping your arms up. And this is a choice if you want to go there, do a little cardio, exhale down. Inhale up. How are you feeling? If you need to do some energy release, join me. Inhale, a little plie. Exhale. Inhale. We're going to switch the arms this next round, okay? Keep your palms together. Inhale, rise. Exhale, swoop the air down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, scoop. One more. Beautiful. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, mountain pose. Close your eyes, pause and feel. I'm gonna go shut my girl's door. Hopefully I left you in mountain pose for that long, sorry. <sighs> okay, what time is it? 10.50, perfect, okay. You know how it is when we got kids. You gotta deal with them every once in a while. Okay, this is real life. 
sheltering at home and yoga. Chair pose. Exhale, palms come together, heart center, twisting over to your left, pushing your right palm into the left hand, going into a deeper twist. I know there's lots of side body twists here. Maybe you open your arms out wide. Maybe you stay there. Maybe you bend that left leg for flamingo pose. Trying to kick that foot to your sit bones. Maybe you take your left hand out to the side, reaching for the pinky edge side of the right foot, and then start to come into the baby grasshopper. Yeah, straightening that left leg. If you really want to find balance, try to bring that left hand to your chest and not fall over. Ah, oh, all right, we're going to find our way down to a seat since I'm already there. Everybody come down to a seat and reach yasana, keeping a neat bend in the left leg if you'd like. Right leg crosses over. If this is too much for your hip bones, extend the left leg so both sit bones can come down to the ground. Okay? Inhale, setting your left arm up high. So the right leg is over and crossed, left arm's reaching up. Exhale, twist. Closing your eyes here. I want you to listen to your breath more than forcing yourself into a twist, okay? So this is gonna be a subtle twist. Inhale, feel the breath move down the length of the spine. Widening and expanding. And on your exhale, feel that space that you just created. And at the top of the exhale, you twist into that space. Okay, let's try that again. Feel the inhale. And your exhale, the exhale moves you more than your arm moving you. Let's do that three more times. Maybe you start to gaze over the right shoulder. Exhale, releasing, bowing to the other side. Keeping a root in that right foot, drawing your hands forward, lifting the left leg up into the sky for standing splits. Mm -hmm. Taking your right hand, maybe grabbing onto the back shin or the back calf, squeezing the elbow into the knee. Steady gaze, staying on those left fingertips if you like, or reaching your left hand and squeezing the elbow into the knee here. Left leg keeps reaching up high. Find steadiness and ease. Mm -hmm. Exhale, lowering that left leg down to the ground for pyramid pose. Right leg forward, left leg back, about half or your spinal length distance. Not half your spinal length, your full spinal length. Inhale, coming up halfway, squaring the hips, right hip goes back, left hip goes forward. Inhale, exhale, folding forward over that front leg. I'm going to reposition myself just so you can see where we're going, okay? So folding forward, if you'd like to do a little play with this pose, this next pose a little crazy, but you want to walk your hands back instead of forward. And that left leg scoots back slightly as well. So before it was a little bit closer, scoot it back a little bit more. And we're just playing with not having weight on that back leg. So keep your fingertips pushed into the ground and keep shifting the leg back and forward, back and forward. And eventually you'll find a spot where you can straighten your arms. Maybe the palms come down, maybe the fingertips stay, and you do a hamstring curl here while pushing your foot into the ground. Holy heck. Can you hold there for three? I'm trying to breathe here. And two, and one, beautiful. Exhale, coming back into that shorter pyramid stance, walking your hands over to the right. So you're crossing over that front foot for steer pose. Getting a nice deep stretch in those outer hips. Feel free to pivot your feet so your toes are pointing towards your hands. You'll get a little bit deeper of a stretch here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Exhale, bend your knees. Come down to a seat. Knee over knee. So that right knee is over the left knee. If you need to keep your feet hugged in, go ahead. Otherwise, walk your feet so they are in the same line together. Inhale, lengthening through the chest. 
Exhale, fold forward and down. Allow your head and neck to soften here. Maybe you reach your arms towards the front of the room. I actually don't know where you are, so it could be the middle of your room, it could be the back of your room. <laughs> but forward. Head and neck soften. What are you doing? No, someone's heart was hurt, I think. Are you hungry? Okay, I'll get you a snack in a second, okay? Go back to your room and I'll get you now. Jesus. Okay, I'll get them for you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Leaning back here, grabbing onto the outer edges of your feet, so the pinky edge side of your feet. Lean back and start to kick your feet into your hands. And this is one of those opposite sides of your mind. So you're like, oh, my left leg isn't straight. I'm gonna straighten my left leg and then your right leg straightens instead. Yeah, that's normal. So try to straighten the opposite leg <laughs> or close your eyes and don't even look. Just feel, because your mind will play tricks on you. Lift the sternum up here. Keep leaning the chest up, gazing up and breathing. Exhale. Lowering back down to the ground, bringing your hands together. We're going to go into handstand, headstand play here. So if you need to find a wall, go ahead. If headstand is not in your practice, um, I recommend not doing that yet. I will, we do headstand stuff in some of my closes that I can walk you through, but I don't like people jumping into headstand. It's one of the most unsafe things you can do if you're not used to having pressure on your neck. I'm okay with you floating into headstand, but not jumping. But you can still try if you want. Bring your hands together. Elbows are going to be shoulder distance apart as you rock yourself forward. Tuck your chin into your chest. Push the top of your head down into the ground. Tuck the toes. Can you scoot over for a second, sweetie? <laughs> okay, talk to your daddy. Talk to your daddy. Okay, so to come into this eagle leg headstand, if you've never been in headstand, like I said, don't go into eagle leg first. Okay, give me a minute, please. Thank you. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. So we're just getting used to putting pressure on our head. Okay? So this might be where you go. You just work on straightening the legs and doing this headstand. If you want to come into headstand fully and lift the feet off the ground, keep walking your feet in, walking your feet in, stacking your hips over the head, and then eventually your feet will float off as you bend your feet into your sit bones. Mm -hmm. Pushing your forearms into the ground. Maybe you wrap your legs for eagle legs here, trying to get that foot around the ankle or the, the calf. One more breath. Awesome. Exhale, slowly finding your way down by drawing your knees back down to the ground slowly, controlled, rolling yourself up, unwinding. All right, let's do butterfly for a second. So I have to get my child a snack or she's going to keep coming in here. Um, feel free to play for a moment, doing some forward folds, whether having your feet together or your legs straight, and then we'll do the other side, okay? Okay, I'm back. So I'm assuming you're in a forward fold. <laughs> Ginger Maine is loving this, yes. Just in case you wonder if I really have kids. I'm just kidding. Who would think that? Okay, we're going to come back into chair pose. So if you're in your forward fold, start to roll yourself back and forward, back and forward, back and put yourself up. Sweeping your arms up, exhale, mountain pose. 
let's see if I remember all that now. If I forget something, it's because we're an hour into this and my mind starts to forget things. <laughs> Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, palms come together, twisting over to your left this time. Left hand pushes into the right. Maybe you gaze up to the ceiling. If you'd like, opening your arms out wide. If you're lucky, the right fingertips will be grazing the ground. Maybe you go into flamingo pose here, rooting into the left foot. It's a little shift. The weight will go slightly to the left so you can lift that right foot off the ground. Maybe gaze down to the ground so you can stay solid and stable. Keep doing a hamstring curl. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take your right hand out to the side, reaching for that leg behind you, and then kicking the leg out for baby grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Play with finding balance. Maybe that right hand comes off the ground, kicking that foot into your hand for three, and two, and one. Finding your way down to a seat if you're not there already. Right leg can stay long, left leg wraps around. If you wanna bend, go ahead. Inhale, right arm reaches up. Find the length from the hip bone, which is grounded on the ground. If it's not, lengthen the right leg. Reach, 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 and on your exhale, twist. And I don't care if that arm is wrapped around the outside or the inner thigh, because once I said on the other side, we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna let our breath control the twist. We're not gonna let our shoulders do the twisting for us. So take an inhale, fill your spine and vertebrae, not only lengthen, but widen. And on the top of the exhale, you'll feel that new space that you just created and allow the spine to just twist a little bit more in the horizontal direction. Each vertebrae has its own range. And we'll do five breaths total, keeping your shoulders soft, your neck soft, maybe gazing over the left shoulder with your inner gaze. Exhale, bowing to the other side. Rooting that left foot, starting to shift your weight forward into your hands as you lift the right leg up to the sky for standing splits. Mm -hmm. Right leg is your root. Both hands can also be a root. And this is more of a pendulum. You wanna find balance. The higher that left leg lifts, the more that your head can sink down to the ground. Maybe your left hand reaches for the shin or the back of the ankle and you squeeze the elbow. Squeeze the elbow into the knee. Okay, engage your core. Steady gaze. Right fingertips on the ground. They start to walk themselves in a little bit closer. Maybe both hands reach. You can't until you can. So there'll be lots of I can't, I can't, I can't. And then one day, all of a sudden, you can. Yes. Exhale. Where did we go after this? <laughs> See, I told you I was going to lose my train of thought. Oh yeah. We went into steer pose. Yeah. So we went, we dropped the leg into a pyramid pose. So it's going to be a half of a downward dog stance, basically standing on your railroad tracks, left leg forward, right leg back, bring your hands to your hips, stand up tall, square your hips here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. So maybe it feels really nice in your body to keep your torso parallel to the ground. That's great, you can stay here. Over time, once you find more flexibility in that front leg, feel free to fold forward, fold forward. Mm -hmm. We'll take a few breaths here before playing with lifting that back leg. Because to lift that back leg, you really wanna have some suppleness to your front hamstring and calf. Otherwise you might pull a muscle. We don't want to do that. Okay. So now your hands are forward, walk them behind you. Fingertips are pointing towards the back of your mat. And then we just do a little bit of movement with that right leg. It goes a little bit back and a little bit forward, a little bit back and a little bit forward. So we're playing with moving our weight around like a kid. We play doing a million cartwheels in the ground looking like a fool until one day you're like, oh, that actually might look like a cartwheel. Cool. And then all of a sudden they're doing cartwheels and you're sitting there drinking your glass of wine like, hmm, I guess I could have learned something too. <laughs> 
yes, you can keep learning. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we stop learning. If you want to do the hamstring curl, lift that right heel towards your butt. Draw the knee into your chest. Keep pushing for three, two, one. Exhale, beautiful. Lowering that leg, coming back into your pyramid stance with the legs. This time walking your hands over to the left for steer pose. So you can keep your legs the way they are or start to pivot your feet so your toes are pointing towards your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Beautiful, exhale, bend the knees. Finding your way down to a seat this time. Your left knee is over your right knee. Moving your feet wherever you need. Each side is different. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Soften the neck, soften the head. Bring your forearms down to the ground or to blocks if you need them. Where can you soften? Where are you holding on to tension? Inhale, coming back up, handlebar pose, finding the outside edges of your feet, leaning back and kicking away from you. You might have to close your eyes here, like I said, right side, left body. <laughs> and just like boat pose, we're not hunching here. This is not a hunch asana. We want a straight spine. Sternum lifts, keep kicking the feet away from you. Exhale. Drawing your feet back down to the ground. Once again, we can come into that headstand play. If you want to go straight into headstand, go ahead. Bringing your hands down. If tripod headstand is more of your flavor, you can do that too. I prefer my forearms down on the ground. If you're not sure what shoulder distance apart is, grab onto your elbows, and that's going to be the distance. So you can bring your hands down, palms together. Lift the hips, lift the hips. You're now on your knees, tuck the chin into the chest. Push your hand, your head into the back of your hands, tuck your toes, and then begin to lift the hips. So you're playing here if you're new to headstand. You are not going to jump into headstand. You promise yourself, you promise your neck, you are not going to jump into headstand. You float into headstand by walking your feet closer to your body. Your hips eventually lift over your head, and then you bend the right foot, or the right, right knee, sorry. Feel balance, feel the left knee bend and you float, float, float. If you need a wall behind you, if you're new to this, go ahead. And then maybe you find eel legs here, wrapping the left foot around the right lower trunk. Mm -hmm. Pushing the forearms down into the ground. Only 10% of weight on your head if you can. Yes, you're doing great. Exhale, a core contraction, drawing your knees down, unwinding if you hooked your feet. Dropping the tops of the, or the toes down to the ground. That wasn't very floaty down, but whatever. It is what it is. All right. Walking your legs out long. Shake, shake, shake. We're going to do a wide straddle here. Bringing your legs out to 90 degrees or even more so. We're going to be here for about a minute. So maybe you start with your legs a little closer, and over time, you come into a full split. If you don't want to do a wide-legged straddle, you can also do froggy pose or cardi b pose <laughs> i'm not going to shake my butt but frog pose is where you're on your knees and your forearms and you're pushing your sit bones back to your heels so both of those are great poses to do right now before our peak pose and if you're in a wide legged straddle come down to your forearms keep your feet flexed How are you guys doing? It's weird not being able to see your students to see like, oh my God, I'm struggling. So if you wanna come a little bit wider, bring your hands behind you, push your hips up and then scoot the hips forward. And then hinge from the hips so we're not sitting back on the posterior tilt. Come forward and down to the elbows again. Maybe you lay down all the way to your chest. But notice if your inner thighs are trying to spiral forward, try to do the external spiraling here. So they're traveling down and away from you, not forward, okay? Knees are pointing up, if that helps you at all. Keep your knees pointing up. All right, walk 
talking yourself up. Coming into a low squat. So this is where we're gonna play with grasshopper or side crow. Oh. We're actually gonna start in figure four. So I'm gonna show you grasshopper, but just know that if you don't have the hips opening right now, you can do side crow play instead because they both start at the same position. We're just gonna have different legs. So you can try figure four just to see what happens. And if your body tells you, and then you'll pretty quickly, it'll say no, then you know it's no, okay? So let's take our left leg, cross it over the right for a seated figure four. Okay? Reaching the left arm up overhead, twisting to the side. Left arm reaches up and twist. So we wanna get the sole of the foot into the right shoulder or right tricep. If it's on our elbow, we're not gonna be able to find our way into grasshopper. We're not gonna have enough of a shelf once we bend into our side crow position. So we really wanna be able to slide the arm down as much as possible. So reach, 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 and then push your foot into your hand, bring both hands down to the ground, and you're gonna keep drawing that right foot in so you can find yourself in a low toe squat. You're gonna shift your hands down to chaturanga arms, and then start to walk that right foot forward until you're leaning the foot into the left arm and then reach that right leg out. The right leg can also be stacked on your elbow of the right arm for grasshopper pose. Keep leaning the chest forward <laughs> for three, two, one. So if that felt like, no, 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 Leslie, you can come into side crow, uncrossing your feet from figure four, yeah? So I can show you side crow if you wanna help get into grasshopper on the other side. Do the twist to the reach. This time hands come down, same thing. Walk both feet forward, not one foot forward and then start to lean to your side, looking towards your feet. Uh-huh, okay? So that's side crow. Let's try the other side. <laughs> this time the right foot is gonna come over. So even if you're not gonna do grasshopper, this is a nice pose to do, so you can feel the hip flexibility, those outer hips, okay? If this is too extreme, you can always lay on your back. You can also uncross into fire log pose. But we're gonna stay here, right arm reaches up and twist it over. Reach it up and twist, up and twist. Try to get that shoulder as close as you can to your foot, coming into chaturanga arms, walking that left foot forward, and then lifting your foot. Oh, see, I slid down for that one. This side's a little tighter for me. Oops, I don't wanna show you the other way to get into it, okay? Lean your chest, you're coming into chaturanga arms, so then you have a bend in your shelf. You start to walk that left foot forward, and then you kick it out in front of you, and breathe. Lift the chest, use your hands for three, two, and one. Exhale, slowly find your way down. I'll do crow on this side too, for those of you who were just laughing and looking like this lady is insane, that's okay. Come into crow by coming into a low squat. Hands come over to your left side this time. Chaturanga arms. Make sure that that knee is supported right above the elbow. Walk your feet forward and around until eventually you can lift your feet off the ground. And breathe here, okay? One more breath. Exhale. Everything down, awesome. Okay, look at you guys, so cool. Let's do a little bit of rocking and rolling here. So before we come into our final back bends, I wanna give you a moment to play. So if handstand is something you've been wanting to play with, maybe with eagle legs, go ahead and jump into handstand against the wall or not and play with that. Maybe you're playing with headstand, maybe you're playing with uh, shoulder stand, but I'm gonna give you one minute to do whatever you want right now, okay? And then we're gonna all meet together on the mat again. So take a moment and play. Maybe it's cartwheels if you're not in your living room. I know, what kind of yoga teacher allows freedom of play on an online yoga video, right?
can keep playing here. If you were playing with handstand and you've been wanting to play with like pressing up and down into headstand, there's this really cool thing I just saw. Gotta love Instagram. So what you wanna do is have the wall behind you and come into your L handstand. So lifting the hips over the head and then start to walk your feet down slowly, sliding, trying to keep the low core engaged. It's really hard on carpet to do these hands. It's not my favorite, but it's what I got. Okay? So I only recommend this if you already know how to do headstands and you start to lower slowly and play with that, all right? You don't have to do it now, but it's something cool to play with, okay? So take one more moment wherever you are. We're gonna all find our way back to our mats to do our back bending, do a little wrist circles here if you decided to do something with your hands or if maybe you're feeling a little bit of sore from all those side crows and grasshoppers and <laughs> all the fun things. Okay, lay down on your back. Arms come down by your sides. As you inhale, lift the hips, bridge pose. Slowing down our breath here. We're slowing down our practice. Notice your heart rate. If your heart is pulsing like crazy, start to slow down the exhale a little bit more than the inhale. And then exhale, lower your hips, feet together, knees go wide. One hand to heart, the other to the belly. And just take a moment going back inside. Okay, we're gonna do two more back bends of your choice. If you're feeling really tired and that you don't wanna do any back bends, take one of your blocks or books, lift the hips and slide it right underneath the low back, and then kick your feet up into the air. And you can stay here for the next two bridges. Don't even listen to me when I say drop your feet or anything, you just stay there, okay? Otherwise, come back into bridge or wheel if it's in your practice. Only you know your body right now. You only know your energy level and how you're feeling right now. So we're gonna take five breaths wherever you chose to go. Lift the heels. Exhale, slowly lower one vertebrae at a time. And then once again, feet together, knees go wide. If you're on the block, stay there. Okay, your final back bend. What's it gonna be? What is your body telling you it needs? Does it need rest? Does it need more of the same? Does it wanna try something new? Lift yourself up into your final back bend. And then if you wanna try something new, go there. Maybe that means dropping down to the forearms. Maybe it means lifting one of your legs up to the sky. Last breath wherever you are. Coming all the way down. This time planting your feet, starting the windshield wiper, the knees side to side. Slow and steady, taking a full breath when your knees are pointing up before going from left to right. Restabilizing your spine here. Okay, bringing your knees into your chest, giving yourself a hug. 
So we're gonna go into a forward fold to offset some of those back bends. If you wanna roll yourself up to a seat and go into a forward fold, go ahead. I'm gonna do a back lying forward fold. So it's sort of like a shoulder stand plow variation where you bring your feet behind you. But the goal is not to have your hips lifted high, but eventually to have your belly and your thighs to touch. So you have to actually lower your hips here, trying to keep your feet on the ground. And then wrap your arms around your thighs or your knees and give yourself a hug. If you want to go a little bit deeper, reach for the feet. And you'll feel this extension along the torso, the thighs of the torso. Keep reaching your fingertips away from you. Notice if how high your butt is lifted. Try to keep your belly and thighs connected wherever you are. If you're in a forward fold on a seat or on your back, belly and thighs touch, which means you might have to have a big bend in the knees. That is fine, right? So if on your back, you're going to slowly roll down, keeping your hand, tops of the hands down on the ground, flex your toes, and see if you can keep your toes walking up your forearms as long as possible. So they're going to start at your wrist and then they're going to move a little bit closer to the elbow and we want to see if we can walk them all the way down to the elbow. So this takes an incredible amount of core compression and hamstring flexibility, but we try. And eventually we can't go any longer. Bring everything down to the ground, bend the knees, supine twist, knees fall to one side, as you gaze to the other side. So I'm doing eagle legs here. You can also have straight legs and reach for one foot, bend your knees. It's up to you how you want to unwind. Like I said, I trust that you know your body more than anybody else in the world. Mm-hmm, switching sides. So we're going to do one more pose before Shavasana. And once again, you have choices. Intermediate, advanced classes, you get choices because everybody is built differently. Everybody's at a different stage. So we're going to hug ourselves. So maybe you stay on your back and you wrap your arms around the shoulders and you're trying to find a scapula here. So stay on your back. You're trying to find a scapula. Otherwise, you're going to come down to your belly. I don't know if you're able to see me. I'll try to see. And you're going to do the same action basically. So your arms are going to be reaching in between the top chest and the neck, away from each other. And draw your chin down, forehead down. It's okay if they don't touch. And don't worry about bending your elbows if they're on your belly. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to switch sides. If you're hugging yourself, other arm goes on top. So remember which arm is on top before you cross over. Okay, finding your way into your Shavasana.
setting yourself up, maybe wrapping a blanket around you if you're cold, putting a sweater on. Come back to our breath. And so for your Shavasana, we'll be here for about two minutes or so, but if you want to stay longer, by all means, turn off your phone, close your laptop, spend as long as you need in your meditative state, especially after these tougher flows. Your mind might be a little quieter than usual, so you can benefit into a deeper state of relaxation, of stillness. You can be a little more gentle with yourself when your thoughts do come. And just let them go again. Be like the leaf, not the wind. Find stillness. Starting to lengthen your breath. Reaching your arms up overhead for a deep stretch. Rolling over to one side and finding your way to a comfortable seat. We'll close our practice just as we began with one ohm. Full exhale. Inhale. Oh. Hands to forehead. Be light and shine. Hands back to heart. Be light and love. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today. Um, feel free to message me or comment below and let me know how you're feeling, um, what you thought, if it's positive criticism and not like, I hated everything about it. Um, maybe go shoot that at a tree or something, something that's more grounded right now that can handle all the, I got enough right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you all. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you have a beautiful Easter weekend with your loved ones 
and make sure to call someone in your life who you haven't spoken to for a while that might be struggling right now, you know? You might share something in common.